This is the second devotional for Wednesday, August the 18th, and I've given the title of this devotional, The Lord, My Creator, and My God, Psalm 104. The scripture reading for today was Psalm 103 and 104. I've already posted a video of Psalm 103. This now is the second video focusing upon the devotional for Psalm 104. Now, a little bit of an introduction. The author of Psalm 104 is unknown. However, he continues the same theme that we noticed in Psalm 103, and that is giving praise to God and worshiping Him, for He is our Creator, He is our Provider, He is the Sustainer of Creation. Now, the, this devotional then is the second of two devotionals, and we're going to focus on Psalm 104. Now, I've given the title of Psalm 104 this, Creation is God's Glory on Display. And I invite you, read Psalm 104. It really needs little explanation, very little commentary. The simplicity of the psalm and the beauty of it is such that it can inspire both saint and sinner to contemplate the earth, the sun, the stars, the planets, and understand that all creation is a testimony of God's person and existence. In fact, as you read verse 1 of Psalm 104, it is almost like the pen of the author sings the praises of the Lord, saying, and I read, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. You know, Psalm 104 unfolds for us a timeline that is very much like the first five days of creation, Genesis chapter 1. Now, I'll tell you why later, why the sixth day, the creation of the animals on the land, as well as the creation of man, the seventh day, the day that God rested, is not going to be found in Psalm 104. And so the focus is the first five days of creation. And so on the first day of creation, verse 2, we have God beginning to create and the light of God, the Shekinah glory of God, stretching across the heavens. And then we read in verse 3, and he made the heavens his abode. Uh, take time tonight, today, but tonight particularly, and look up at the stars of heaven and ponder the majesty of God, they are as though they are the robe of God himself. And then we continue reading this beautiful verse in verse 3 concerning the Lord, that he maketh the clouds his chariot, and he walketh upon the wings of the wind. What a beautiful thought. Now the second day of creation is found in verse 5 through verse 9. The second day of, of creation, we find in verse 5 that the Lord laid the foundations of the earth. And then you'll notice as you read verses 6 through 9, he begins talking about the waters upon the mountains. And we know this, in the beginning, God would separate the water from the mountains. And by the way, the mountains are even in the depths of the ocean. Have you ever wondered how the sands of the seashore uh, keep the ocean in the ocean, keep the waters in the ocean. Well, that's found in verse 9, where we read that the Creator has set a bound or a boundary that they, the waters, may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. Now, we know that the earth was at one time covered in water by the flood, the judgment of God. But at the writing of this, it's an acknowledgement that the waters never again will drown the earth nor kill man. Now, verses 10 through 11 is the third day of creation. In the third day of creation, God sent fresh waters throughout the earth where the beast might quench their thirst, where the waters would, would water the grasses, the vegetables, and the trees of the earth. On the fourth day, we read verses 19 and 23, that God set the stars, the sun, the moon in place, and by them the days and the season were set. The fifth day, 
Verse 24, ponder in the creation of the fifth day, the psalmist exclaimed, O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Verses 20 through 23, we read about the teeming creatures of the seas that were created on the fifth day. Verses 24 and 30, the provision of food that was made for the creatures of the sea. Now the psalmist observed that it was the Lord who gives and the Lord who takes life in verse 29, and that God has made provision to renew the earth, verse 30. Now, the subject of creation then concludes in Psalm 105, uh, 4, rather, on the fifth day. The psalmist doesn't go into detail about the sixth day when God created life on dry land or created man in his image, nor does the psalmist consider the seventh day the day that God rested. Rather than consider man the height of God's creation and the focus of the psalm, turns to contemplating the glory of God displayed in his creation. Verse 31, The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. Now here's a closing thought. Having considered all that God had created, the psalmist burst out with song. And we read, And I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been, uh, while I have my being. That is, while I have my breath, while I have life. My meditation of Him, the Lord, shall be sweet. And I will be glad in the Lord. Take a few moments. Ponder the glory of God in His creation. I remember that all creation is a display of the glory of the Creator. Let us, in verse 34, join the psalmist with, in song, lifting our voices and say, I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. While I have life, I am determined to praise God with my voice and with my life. Make that your goal for this day and for every day that follows. God bless. Thank you for joining me today in this devotional. Bye-bye.